So hi, my name is Nathan McKay, and today I'm going to be giving you a demo of the new F5 distributed cloud console and our web application and API protection. Uh, so let's dive right in. Um, once you log on, the first thing you'll see is this kind of common services dashboard, right? Uh, this is basically a catalog of all the available services from application delivery services to um, security services, such as the web application API protection, which we're gonna show you. Um, and it's like your central kind of hub for uh, ma managing these services. This can be customized depending on like what your role is, whether you're a SecOps practitioner or a DevOps practitioner, um, we can kind of customize this in order to streamline your workflows and just show you the things that you need is, you know, you, you most care about. So let's kind of take a look first at our cloud and edge sites. Um, this is our kind of top down view of your, your application um, structure and where in the world it's deployed. You know, one of the big uh, value propositions for F5 distributed cloud is this um, concept that we call multi-cloud networking where we can, you know, manage and deploy apps to really any cloud provider that's out there. So we'll give you a couple different views here. Um, one is the, the global view, which shows, you know, the regions where you have applications deployed. And the other is the site list view here, where you can get a, you know, a more detailed picture of the applications themselves, uh, how they're performing, what their health is, their administrative state, et cetera. Um, notice here that we also show you what cloud provider uh, they're deployed to. So if you're not familiar with F5 distributed cloud, um, as you can see, we can deploy onto AWS, onto Azure, to VMware, and to the F5 network as well. So lots of options uh, for how you want to deploy. Like if you uh, are all in on the cloud, great. We can totally accommodate that workflow. If you are, you know, you still have some uh, on-premise data centers and you manage applications that way, great. We can help you there too. So that's just one quick view of your applications. Now, if you wanted to manage these or you know, manage the web application API protection, um, you can hit the quick menu and jump, jump straight into that. Um, there's a couple different ways that you can manage or see this app, right? Or your various apps. And one is the dashboard. This gives you the overall view of all of your applications that are deployed into this namespace. And as you can see, I have a couple here. We can, of course, drill down and look at things based on time frames. Um, you know, I could say set a custom time interval and look at events from uh, a given time frame that was, you know, I was maybe more interested. And this is really handy for uh, SecOps practitioners who need to be able to do incident response and, you know, just want to be able to. Um, track certain events historically. So let's kind of keep moving here. Um, <clears throat> there's a couple different ways, you know, we wanted to kind of stress that this is a your single pane of glass, your single dashboard for managing the application. Like you don't need anything else. You don't need to manage the individual cloud provider settings. You can do everything just from here. So um, from our, our security dashboard, we get this great top-down view of everything that's happened. Um, we can list, this, look at the security events, top signatures hit, events by location. If there was something happening uh, that affected us on a region basis, you know, like a denial of service attack sourced from a given location. This is all just a great way to see at a glance what is happening. Of course, from there, we can drill down and take a look at, you know, the individual events. One of the things that's really unique and interesting uh, about what we're doing here in F5 Distributed Cloud is, you know, we're managing and monitoring um, users based on intent. We kind of have this behavioral web application protection. And this, this score is calculated for for a given user um, based on how they interact with the application, you know, what they've done that we've logged and found was suspicious. We build this, you know, behavioral score for them over time based on those interactions, right? 
right? We can see here that uh, this individual user may have uh, triggered, oh, that's not showing too much, may have triggered a number of security events in the past. Uh, they may have failed a JavaScript challenge. There may have been a CAPTCHA event challenge, uh, et cetera. So there's a bunch of different things that you can look for. Um, let's take a look at a specific time range again. And we'll go back a couple days. We can see that you know, there's a bunch of different things that we use to build this score. Um, in this case, this person triggered, you know, 100% suspicion score. So there's all kinds of stuff that we're tracking is based on behavioral, it's based on, you know, analysis, it's based on how they've interacted with the application over time. We can also see that we're tracking uh, different types of security events. And we kind of showed this a little bit already, but um, again, really important for SecOps in, Users, if they are um, doing incident response or they need to make do some troubleshooting based on an event that occurred, you know, we know that fraud teams, for instance, have to do analysis uh, pretty often, just depending on on what's occurred. So from here, you can drill in and look at the individual events, look at the requests that were made, um, where they were sourced from. You know, all, all this normal stuff you'd expect to be logged, like their user agent, their device type, and we can get a better picture of what actually happened and also see what um, policies and, uh, you know, what kinds of rules were triggered. In this case, it looks like maybe there was something related to shape bot protection that was triggered. And we can show you a little bit more about that here in a second. But as you can see, this is kind of your central location for anything security. Um, we're also triggering and tracking denial of service. As you can see, during this particular time frame, we had some events that were uh, logged as being anomalous uh, based on excess user traffic and what we'd observed over time. So overall, the service itself um, protects itself because of the way we have it structured. There's nothing that you know, an end user really has to do in the event of a denial of service. It's just something that we, we kind of show you as far as uh, what's happening and to keep the customer abreast of how their applications are behaving and performing out in the wild. We can also get this request-based view where it allows us to drill down even further. As we can see here, based on the color coding, there was some anomalies that occurred. There was um, some 500 series response codes. And during that time frame, maybe this was an attack, maybe it was a misconfigured client, but we can go ahead and drill down into it and get that clear picture of what's happened, not just in terms of uh, the errors that occurred, but in terms of the application performance. So say on this view, for instance, I can see that, um, you know, I had about 10 millimeters 10 milliseconds of latency between the client and the load balancer, and some you know, really high backend application latency. Um, so this is one way that I can troubleshoot the app. You know, if I have invested heavily in microservices, um, there may be one area of the application that's misbehaving or is not performant. And this is how I can um, get a clear picture of what's happening there. So I can show you a little bit more about the API endpoints here in a second, but as you can see, we're drilling or we're logging quite a lot of information. We've uh, also made a lot of this available by the API too. Uh, so if you have tools that you use in order to do research, we can of course accommodate all of that as well. So lots of really, really cool stuff here. Um, taking a look at the API endpoints, um, one of these, awesome features that we have here is uh, API uh, auto discovery, where the service watches and monitors all of the requests, you know, as a web application firewall would do. Um, and it monitors um, the individual URIs and paths. And we can, of course, show you the structure of that application itself and do things like, um, 
provide error rates and latency data uh, request rates on an individual API endpoint basis. So again, this is a great way to see how your application is performing on an individual microservice basis and get a clearer picture of all of that. Um, we can, of course, <clears throat> well, maybe not of course, but we can uh, also provide a, a swagger export of uh, the structure of the application in order to you know, be used um, for auditing, et cetera. So uh, you know, a lot of times application teams might want to audit what they think they have in production versus what they you know, expect. So we can provide you the Swagger export and you know, it's a JSON file um, that can be handed off to the application teams to do a comparison of what our observed application structure is in production versus you know, what we, we consider, um, what we know it to be in development. So this is really cool. And again, this is something that uh, we didn't have to build this. Right, like we didn't have to provide the structure in order to get this visibility. We just enabled the, the machine learning to uh, do the, the API auto discovery and it did the rest and it starts building that map automatically for us. So again, a couple different views that we can look at here, um, different ways of getting this information. And again, as you can see, uh, we're tracking these, those latency statistics um, and request statistics that I mentioned, like request rate um, on an individual API basis. So really, really neat stuff. Uh, the real time tab here just kind of shows a, a bunch of information in real time, uh, well, auto refreshing anyway, so that you don't have to um, tell it to refresh. It provides a more simplistic view, but again, uh, it can definitely come in handy. Also, we wanted to showcase our bot defense capability. Uh, F5 has made um, really high levels of investment in defending against unwanted automation. And uh, this is one area where you will see that investment come through. Uh, so if we, again, maybe we look for uh, a given day here about a week or so ago and take a look at those individual requests. You can see that we're categorizing traffic based on you know, whether or not, uh, based on observed behavior, whether or not we saw a person, a human being, or whether or not we're dealing with bots and unwanted automation. We can also break that down for you um, based on where that traffic is being sourced from. In this case, we can see we saw quite a lot of uh, malicious requests sourced from uh, Amazon and Spectrum, right? Uh, primarily Amazon in this case, but this is a demo. So this is just kind of like where um, it was for, for this particular time frame. So again, this is all like powered by our, our machine learning and um, you know, lots of really advanced capabilities here. You can also see the bot traffic overview, which breaks down uh, the requests a little bit more granularly. So this is all well and good, right? We've shown you a lot of really advanced capabilities, but how about making use of it, right? We know that a, a lot of customers in the past have um, trepidation and um, maybe not the best experience managing WAFs, right? Like we've heard from our customers very frequently that uh, they're worried about false positives. They don't want to impede their customers and they wanna make sure that, you know, people have a good experience on, on their applications. So what we've done is, you know, worked really hard to make this easy to use, you know, to create <clears throat> or to apply all of these protections to get up an application. Uh, you know, we, we wanted to make sure that people, that it was accessible, right? This, this wasn't, um, technology that was only available to people with um, high budgets or you know advanced security teams that anybody could make use of it. So people are familiar with HTTP load balancers and how they work. And um, in F5 distributed cloud, it's a pretty simple matter of creating a new one. And this is where we would apply 
those security controls. So I could do something as simple as give it a name. So you'll do this for basically any um, distributed cloud object. And then we pr can provide some labels and a description if we want. Um, we give it a domain, which is something that you would delegate to the service in order to, for us to make use of it. And of course, provide some, some information about uh, SSL, right? One of the neat things we do here is we can automatically um, obtain certificates for your application so that you don't have to um, upload them or renew them. We can do this automatic enrollment for you. Um, super duper handy stuff. We can automatically redirect to HTTPS so that you're not exposing the application over HTTP accidentally. Um, and we give you some options here to manage this. You would provide an origin server, um, which is you know the backend application servers. And then the security configuration is really pretty easy. We can provide a bunch of namespace service policies um, that the application would inherit from the larger namespace. We can enable or disable bot defense. And we of course provide the WAF. Um, here we can say to create a new one or use an existing one, right? If I create a new one, um, I've got a couple of different options, right? One is of course, whether or not to enable blocking or enforcement mode, um, probably pretty familiar with this. And then I've got some, you know, default app detection settings that I can use and some default bot settings, or I can customize those if I want, right? I can pick the individual attack types that I'm worried about, um, you know, what level of signatures to apply, high and medium accuracy is pretty standard and solid default, uh, whether or not to enable false positive suppression or enable threat campaigns. This is like our uh, intelligence from F5 labs that you can use. And of course, we already mentioned the bot settings, right? So what to do when we encounter a block or encounter a bot, whether or not to block it, et cetera. So lots of really cool stuff. But as you can see, it's really easy to make use of. And of course, um, if I'm using the APIs, I can use this UI to build a policy, you know, using JSON and leverage the distributed F5 distributed cloud APIs in order to apply those policies, to version the policies, et cetera. So really, really cool stuff. Um, and again, this is all really easy to use too. Um, so that's kind of the quick overview. Um, there's more stuff here, as you can, as we showed you earlier, there's a bunch of different services that you can make use of. Um, there's different ways to uh, view the, the information that we've provided. Like I can use this dashboard, for instance, to get a picture of my security across my sites and regions and not just for a given application. So again, really interesting stuff and a great way to um, manage your applications and get a clearer picture of how they're behaving. So cool, thank you. Um, that kind of concludes the demo. We will of course provide some additional information. If you're looking to um, do a proof of concept, we can of course accommodate that as well. And again, it's really easy to sign up. It doesn't take much. Um, we have a free tier and teams tier, and of course, organization tiers for people who have larger organizations and more apps to manage. So uh, thank you.